for this lesson and the next lesson after this one, we're going to start um, using text um, in Photoshop and exploring text creatively. Um, the image that you're looking at here is um, something that will be accessible from the Canvas page in the module for this assignment. Um, you'll uh, basically download or uh, import this into Photoshop somehow, either drag, and, drag it down to the icon or you might have to download it and then open it with Photoshop. Either way, we're starting with this image. And essentially, we're going to incorporate the word bricks over this, kind of superimposing uh, the text, okay? So essentially, we're going to have to do a couple of steps. Um, this is a really quick assignment. You should be able to finish this one and then be able to do uh, one on your own, finding an image that you want to use, such as bricks or or maybe it's a, a beach scene or a sunset or a um, anime or who knows what, uh, video game. I don't know. Whatever strikes your interest, okay? And then you're going to have to select a font to superimpose over it, as we're about to do with this image, and um, so that you can still see the image, but then you can see the text. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. But again, this is a quick um, lesson. And you should be able to complete this demonstration and then complete your own within one class period. Okay. All right. So we're going to duplicate this image. Uh, we can do that by taking this and two finger touch on your trackpad and go duplicate layer. Okay, and then um, there is a quick command for that, by the way. I'm going to control Z that, and I'm going to show you, it's uh, or tell you about it. It's control J, or I'm sorry, command J, since we're on a Mac. So that's how I did that. I could either two finger touch and hit duplicate or command J. Okay, it's a quick command. Um, okay, so we're going to put a blank layer in between these layers. So I'm going to click on this bottom layer. Anytime we go down and click the new layer, it's going to put it above the layer that's selected. So there's also a quick command for um, adding a layer, and that's Command J. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, now we're going to fill this layer with white. Okay, we can do that by coming over here to our uh, foreground color. Click on that. Select white. Click OK. And then we can take our bucket tool and fill that in. Okay. Um, at some point, you may want to try different colors. Could try black, could try gray, could try any other color, something that might go with red, or whatever your image is, you might want to try something different for here. And I'll uh, show you that in a moment. Okay, so now we're going to um, select the top layer, and then we're going to come over and select the type tool. Okay. At the top, now that we have the type tool, which is this T, okay, that is the type tool. Um, now we have it selected. We know we have it selected because we have the T icon there. Now these are the fonts. We got a lot of different fonts here, okay? And this is going to be important that you select a font that will work for your image uh, that you uh, use after this one. You can just go through and try different ones. Uh, and the thing about fonts is they kind of have a certain character to them. This is a sample of what those fonts look like. So you can see this lemon head. This is a really kind of jumbled kind of, uh, kind of, um, not really your plain Jane looking font uh, that you might see in some other ones. Some of them are just really bulky. 
manly man font. So, um, uh, Miss Mishtaken, uh, Mor Mon Monaco Minion Pro. I mean, what's interesting is just even some of the names of some of these fonts. Husky Slash. So, anyway, some of these fonts I think are just installed on my computer. You may not have on your computer, but we're all going to use the same font for this example. Okay, I just thought I'd uh, kind of show you the vast amounts of different fonts you might want to try when you um, go to do your version of this assignment. Okay, um, I mean, fonts is a whole big study in itself and typography um which there's a lot that can be done with that which is essentially being able to utilize uh, a digital program um, for using typography because obviously trying to hand draw typography is a really difficult thing to do and uh but by doing it this way we're typing things in and uh, then doing more type of graphic design type work. Okay. All right. So let's figure out a font to use. We're going to use Gil Sands. So I'm going to come down here and select Gil Sands. And it is the one I have selected now because I just practiced this lesson before I started to record it. So we got Gil Sands. And I'm going to go over here. We got Ultra Bold selected. Um, there's bold italic, there's bold, semi-bold, and so forth. But we want something really bold because what that's going to do is going to make it uh, extra wide so that the image of the bricks will show through, and you'll see in just a minute. All right, so we're going to set the color to white. If this wasn't white, you would want to make sure it is white. So it is white, so maybe if it was black, Right, if it was black, we'd want to then change that to white. Okay, all right, so now we are going to uh, click on our image. And now the size of it might be really small right now. You can tell by that cursor just how small that is. I'm going to zoom in, you can see just how small that cursor is. So we're going to increase it here point size let's just go 72 let's see how big that is still we'll, we'll probably resize that when we're done so we're going to do all caps i'm going to go to my caps lock we're going to type in bricks okay now once we're done with that when you come up here and hit the check mark and we're done with the text now notice the layer it created it's got this t on it right and it actually says the word bricks because that's what we typed in there Okay, so we want to expand this uh, font to be very large. So we're going to Command T for transform, and we want to kind of fill this image. Okay, there, that, come down. Now, generally speaking, a lot of times in typography world and graphic design world, they would frown upon the idea of doing something like this. They're like, Oh gosh, do not stretch a font. It's just um, sort of a no-no in the design world, but we're going to do it here. Okay. All right. So we're going to click return. Okay. Now we're going to do some other special things. We're going to do, um, we're going to drag the text below the uh, brick layer. We're going to lose the, uh, the type because now it's underneath. And then we're going to select the top brick layer and we're going to create a clipping mask. Okay, the way we do that is two finger touch on that and click on create clipping mask. Okay, so now we got there, um, we created a mask, okay? We took the uh, font and basically made it into a mask so that then um, the, the brick will only show up where the letter, letters are, okay? Now, if, um, 
you know, this really right now isn't being used at all. This bottom layer, uh, you could probably even trash it. Um, because really we got a white background here, but we don't want to necessarily do that because we can do something else to this. Okay. Um, we can take this white and drop the opacity on it. Okay. And as you can see, let me just see what happens if I get rid of that. Yeah. See, we need that image underneath if we drop the opacity on the white because um, then we can see the bricks go outside of that okay so this is what we're going for you know drop the opacity on the white so we can see the background brick wall so it's like the bricks go continuously across this through the font and everything but then we can see the font basically overlaid on top of it Okay, and then kind of a lighter version of color going around the font. Okay. Um, so if we get rid of the brick image that's on top, that's being masked within the letters, you can see it just turns white. Okay. And masks or things are used a lot in Photoshop in terms of the different layers and getting the different layers to be connected. You can see this little downward arrow. That was because of that clipping mask, it created that on the layer below. Okay, that's how that's working. Okay, the, basically these two layers are interacting. Okay, all right. So we could change this white to something else. Um, let's just say we create a new layer and we get rid of the white. And let's go over here and uh, let's make this black. And then we use the fill bucket and we paint it in black. And then we come over to the opacity and we drop that down. So you have choices. Okay, so when you go to do your image, you might prefer to use uh, maybe a certain color, maybe you might want to use another red. Let's get a red, red. All right. Reason you don't see the bucket tool on the end of my green arrows because my caps lock key is on. So I clicked off my caps lock key and now I'm bucket back. And now when I paint that in, drop the opacity. And now I have that. So this is something you want to play with. You could even um, take that color that we have for that and drop the saturation on it. And maybe even darken it a little bit and fill that in. If you think the saturation is too high, or you could even to make the saturation higher on the image, you could click on the image and go to image adjustments, and you could adjust all kinds of things like the brightness and contrast, the levels, the curves, the exposure. I suggest that you play with and try all these things at some point in Photoshop to kind of get a grasp on everything that can happen because what we're doing here is kind of creating subtle contrasts, kind of dialing things in uh, with images. Like right now, that's kind of a very subtle, kind of hard to see. So there's multiple things you can do to an image to create contrast. So hue and saturation, we can increase the saturation on the brick layer. So it has more of a saturated look. Um, we could uh, lighten it up a little bit. It's just all kinds of things to create subtle contrast, to kind of dial it in, to get it specifically to the way, to your liking, to your aesthetic, okay? Aesthetic is a word you may not be familiar with. It's basically meaning uh, what's beautiful, okay? Uh, 
but in a broader sense, it's just what looks good to you, okay? Which is in the eye of the beholder, right? So right now, I kind of like that. You know, I increase the saturation here a little bit, decrease the saturation here. Um, so now my bricks really show up kind of nicely. And I like that, okay? Again, you could do it with just black or white or... And it just is going to depend on your image that you select. You might select, uh, for instance, if you do select a sunset or something like that, and you impose the word sunset over the image, um, you know, whatever the color you use as the overlay might be a color that's within the sunset or something that complements sunset. So what if I wanted to do something that contrasts bricks? Bricks is kind of a, a red color. So what if... Oh, let me undo that. So what if I select this and added a new layer and then use the opposite of this color, which would be basically green. Just may not look very good, but I still want to make the point. Put that over, drop the opacity down so we see some of the bricks in the background. And now that just really contrasts in a way just because, you know, red and green are opposites. Um, whereas if we did orange, orange is an analogous color to red. Um, and so is purple is an analogous color to red. So that might be something to think of your color choices of what goes around the color of the image you use within the letters. Okay. And then also really think of the style of letter that you use. Uh, so Gil Sands is a very blocky kind of letter style. So it kind of goes with the idea of bricks. Maybe we could have found another, maybe that manly man font would have looked a little better for this. But, um, but you just pick a font that is befitting, but make sure it's kind of thick and bold so that then your image has space in the letters to show up. Okay, so save this and turn this in, and then you're going to do an image of your own. That's it.